Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you an action, adventure, sci-fi film from 2019, titled The Wandering Earth. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the year 2061, Earth finds itself in danger, the sun is about to turn into a red giant and will engulf the Earth's orbit within a hundred years. The nations of the world consolidate into the United Earth Government, or UAG, and create the Wandering Earth Project, which consists of migrating Earth out of the solar system using 12,000 huge fusion-powered engines built across the northern hemisphere and along the equator. The human population will be living in underground cities built adjacent to and under those engines. Chinese astronaut Liu Peiqiang will be going on a mission to the Navigation Platform International Space Station to help navigate the Earth along its journey, so he's spending his last night with his son Lu Qi and his father-in-law Han Xiong, while overseeing the gravitational slingshot maneuver of Earth using the gravity of Jupiter on his computer. After teaching Lu Qi that Jupiter has a windstorm and is composed of 90% hydrogen, he tells him he'll be coming back when Lu Qi can see Jupiter without a telescope and that until then, he'll see his father as a star in the sky. Once the child has fallen asleep, he gives Han Xiong his astronaut tag so he and his son can obtain the right to underground city residency without drawing the lots. As he remembers his deceased wife, Lu Peiqiang apologizes to her father for everything. As years pass, much of the human population dies to cataclysmic natural disasters like tsunamis, and most of the surface becomes frozen solid after Earth distances from the sun. 17 years later, in 2078, the astronauts at the space's station are set to return to Earth after the Chinese New Year, but Lu Qi, now a young adult, isn't excited about this news. He leaves a note for his grandfather saying he's leaving, then goes to his foster sister Han Duo Duo's school, to cut power and get her out while everyone else is distracted. He takes her with him to a bar to see Yi Ji Yi, a criminal capable of getting them fake IDs and stolen thermal suits. The amount Lu Qi pays him is enough for him to keep the suits for only one day, so he lies and says he'll return them tomorrow. But when his sister says she thought they weren't coming back, Yi Ji Yi gets angry and tries to stop them. In order to escape, Lu Qi throws a special sphere that grows in size in the middle of the room, pushing all the criminals against the walls as they run away. The siblings are chased throughout the city and reach the lines of workers that are about to be sent to the surface, which is an area the criminals can't enter. Thanks to the fake IDs, the suits and a clearance pass Lu Qi stole from his grandfather, he and Han Duoduo Duo pass off as workers and are allowed to go outside to the now frozen city of Beijing. Using their grandfather's pass, they steal a heavy transport vehicle, which Lu Qi is still learning to drive because he's just a trainee. Their takeoff is rather clumsy, and they hit other trucks on their way out, but eventually, Lu Qi manages to take the road without much trouble, at least, until they reach a vehicle checkpoint and get arrested. In jail, they're pranked by a young man on the next cell called Tim, who is half Chinese and half Australian. Five hours later, Han Xiong comes over to bail them out, but he's arrested as well for trying to bribe the warden. Meanwhile, in the space station, Lu Peiqiang is keeping an eye on Jupiter to see how much time he has left before returning home. His fellow astronaut Maxim Makarov gives him a bottle of vodka as a goodbye gift, which he had to smuggle into the ship because alcohol isn't allowed on board. After going through his daily chores one last time, Lu Peiqiang logs in for the last time, and Moss, the ship's AI, congratulates him for so many years of service, which the rest of the crew punctuates with applause. They're all unaware that Moss has detected a high probability of colliding with Jupiter soon and is sending that information to the UA. Back on Earth, Han Xiong is scolding his grandchildren for what they did and Tim tries to offer commentary, which frustrates Lu Qi and causes him to hit the wall with his fist. The wall starts to crumble under his hand, but it's not just the cell, the whole underground city is going down because Earth's proximity to Jupiter is causing earthquakes. As many of the Earth engines start failing, Han Xiong, his grandchildren, and Tim take advantage of the broken walls and the overall confusion to escape prison. They get back on Han Xiong's truck and drive away while dodging all the building parts that are now falling to the ground and the rocks falling from the mountains. Han Xiong proves to be an excellent driver and manages to get the truck even through a huge wave of snow until they're out of the Beijing. The UAG announces that emergency protocol 3 has started, and all Earth engines must be restarted in 36 hours. All rescue workers must concentrate on this task while the space station enters low consumption mode to consolidate resources, this means all astronauts must go into hibernation mode as well. Before joining his crewmates in the capsules, Liu Peiqiang contacts Han Xiong so that Moss can give them directions to the nearest refuge center. Guards try to stop Han Xiong but he drives around them, only for them to chase after them and park their vehicle in front of Han Xiong's truck, threatening to shoot if they don't collaborate. These guards turn out to be a military rescue team led by Captain Wang Lei, who orders them to follow the emergency protocols and use their truck to help them transport a lighter core to restart the engine in Hangzhou. The ride through the snow is uneventful, but things change when they arrive in the frozen ruins of Shanghai, which look pretty unstable. Wang Lei sends some of his men and a drone to do a recon of the area and orders the trucks to carefully drive through the narrow path ahead of them. Suddenly they're contacted by Liu Peiqiang, 
who has just entered his hibernation capsule and has heard from Moss that his son is on the mission too. He asks Wang Lei to drop all the civilians at the nearest refuge, and the captain responds he can do that with Lu Qi, Han Duoduo, and Tim, but he needs Han Xiong to drive them to their destination. Lu Peikyong asks Wang Lei to take care of Han Xiong, but Lu Qi cuts in and says his grandfather can leave with his sister and he'll be the one to take over the driving. Lu Peikyong tries to protest against the idea, but Lu Qi tells him he can't make decisions for him as he did for his mother. It's then revealed that 17 years ago, when Lu Peikyong learned only one custodian could go with Lu Qi to the underground city, he decided to give up the treatment of his very sick wife who didn't have much time left. Her death was the only way he could ensure his son's survival. Their conversation is interrupted when the planes above them start falling and the ice under the truck begins to crumble, there are also incoming avalanches, all because of Jupiter's gravitational spike. At the space station, Moss starts loading evacuation procedures, which confuses Lu Peikyong. He asks to contact the UAG, but Moss doesn't listen and releases the hibernation gas into his capsule. Meanwhile, Wang Lei's group loses a vehicle to the falling rocks and finds themselves on a blocked road. Everyone starts leaving their trucks before they get crushed as well, and Lu Qi releases one of his special spheres to protect his family while the soldiers rescue the lighter core since it's humanity's last hope. The group decides to climb the Shanghai Tower from the inside to try to reach the other side of the ruins. As the civilians climb up the elevator shaft with the lighter core behind them and the tower slowly starts to collapse, the soldiers try to find a way out and find themselves with no other choice but to shoot at a frozen window to create a path. Most of the crew makes it to the 75th floor, but the rope starts breaking before Han Xiong, one of the soldiers in the core reach them as well. The group prioritizes dragging in the core, so Lu Qi is left holding his grandfather alone, which means he's about to be pulled back into the shaft. To avoid this, Wang Lei cuts his rope and causes Han Xiong to fall, but he's grabbed by the soldier, who throws him into a gap in the wall before he's crushed by the falling elevator. Han Duoduo and Lu Qi want to save their grandfather, but it's too dangerous and there's no time, so Wang Lei's team drags them away as Han Xiong's suit runs out of oxygen. Accepting his fate, he takes off his helmet and lets the cold freeze him to death while he remembers how 17 years ago, he rescued baby Han Duoduo from a flood and decided to adopt her, naming her after his daughter. The rest of the group manages to escape the tower right before it collapses, and Lu Qi is furious at Wang Lei for not saving his grandfather. He tries to punch him to no avail, the captain is trained in combat. So Lu Qi decides that he and his sister will abandon the mission since the military group has no use for them anymore now they've lost the truck. Tim decides to go with them too. At the space station, Lu Peikyong manages to force his body to wake up from hibernation. This is a breach of protocol, so to rectify this accidental awakening, the AI awakens two more crewmates, Makarov and Hamdan. Lu Peikyong explains to them that the station has changed courses and lost contact with Earth, the planet has been abandoned and he worries about his son. When Makarov points out they're in low consumption mode, Lu Peikyong tells him it's a lie and shows him the energy readings on the screen, calling it desertion. He plans to enter the main module to stop the station, and Makarov accepts to help. They put on their suits and open an airlock by planting a bomb Lu Peikyong has put together, they're sucked out as soon as the door breaks open. Lu Peikyong manages to hold onto a rope and grabs Makarov's as well so he doesn't float away before noticing how Earth is being pulled by Jupiter. Han Duoduo, Lu Qi, and Tim follow an SOS signal until they find a truck stuck in a crash but still intact. Inside, they meet engineer Li Yi, who tries to attack them until they explain their rescue workers. Now Lu Qi has a vehicle he can drive, the four of them can go home, but they hear an old message from Wang Lei's unit saying they're in trouble and they need help transporting the core because it's the underground city's only hope, so Lu Qi gives in and decides to drive back to them. Meanwhile, Wang Lei's team has reached the Hangzhou engine, only to find out it's destroyed. One of the teammates suddenly drops behind them frozen to death, which angers Agent Zhou Qian and causes her to shoot the core as she says she doesn't want to see any more deaths. Lu Qi and the others arrive then and tell them they have another lighter core in the truck, so everyone agrees to work together and take it to the engine in Sulawesi. Back at the station, Lu Peikyong and Makarov are climbing the ship's structure to reach the main module, which is going in circles and pushes them off the rails when it comes closer. Both astronauts manage to hold onto a different rail and plan to jump on the module when it passes by again, Lu Peikyong does so successfully but Makarov is killed by the automated security measures. There's no time to grieve though, so Lu Peikyong hurries to enter the main module through a nearby hatch and tries to stop the station, but manual override is invalid. Moss explains to him that this isn't desertion, all its actions have been approved by the UAG and are perfectly legal. Lu Qi's group arrives at Sulawesi and discovers that the engine has already been fully restored along with 90% of the engines around the planet. However, they are so close to Jupiter's gravitational pull now, that the engines are no longer enough to divert the trajectory. Moss already knew this would happen and informed the UAG, which is why they've authorized the space station evacuation. The AI has a new mission as a priority now, 
instead of assisting Earth, the station must carry on a project called Helios. Earth will collapse with Jupiter in seven days, SOMOS broadcasts a final message to the world, telling them about Helios. The spaceship will act as an interstellar arc and take the 300,000 embryos, 100 seeds of basic crops, DNA maps of all known species, and digital libraries of all human civilizations to a planet with a fitting biosphere to begin a new Earth there. The AI offers kind words towards humanity, but in the underground cities, people are panicking and rioting. Lu Peqiang should return to his hibernation capsule, but he asks Moss to help him have a final talk with his son. Sadly, Moss can't find Lu Qi's location, so both father and son reminiscence about the old days and the night they saw Jupiter together. This memory brings back an important fact, Jupiter is composed of 90% hydrogen and has been absorbing Earth's atmosphere. Lu Qi tells Li Yi this, and the engineer gets excited when he realizes there's still hope, with all the oxygen Jupiter has sucked in, lighting the planet up could create a combustion shockwave strong enough to push Earth away. They'd only need a match, and that match is the Sulawesi engine. Even if it's a very dangerous mission, Wang Lei's team accepts it, because it's better than waiting a week for their deaths. The group goes to the control center by truck while Li Yi assigns each teammate a task to do during the execution of their plan and Wang Lei tries to contact the space station to no avail. All other rescue units are evacuating the area and ignore Wang Lei's request for help, so they'll have to do this alone. Lu Qi and Wang Lei shake hands before the team takes off on the mission. After entering the engine building, the group splits. Han Duoduo and Zhou Qian will go to the communications room to try to ask for reinforcements, Li Chu and Tim are in charge of taking the lighter core to the reaction chamber, Wang Lei and his men will manually unlock the engine, and Li Yi will gain control of the system to concentrate all the energy in only one nozzle. Han Duoduo tries to contact the other rescue units, but they either ignore her or can't understand what she's saying. Li Yi manages to hack his way into the system and tells Wang Lei's team to start pushing the enormous pin while Li Chu and Tim force their way into the reaction chamber. Things seem to be going well at first, but soon the problems begin. Li Yi can't shut down the engine because his software is stuck at 99%, so a fellow scientist called Lao he must enter the CPU room and reconfigure the connections. This causes the engine not to fully incorporate the core so Li Chu must jump in and push it manually, it also starts creating some vibrations in the area that make walls crumble. Some debris falls between Wang Lei's team and the locking pin, and Zhou Qian dies when protecting Han Duoduo and Li Yi. While Li Chu uses a blowtorch to detach the lighter core and push it farther, Han Duoduo finds an astronaut tag and uses it to contact Lu Peqiang and tell him of their plan. Moss cuts in and says some Israeli scientists had already thought of that and in their calculations said it wouldn't work, but Lu Peqiang doesn't care and calls the UAG anyway. He requests for reinforcements to be sent to Sulawesi, only to be turned down. Not wanting to give up, Lu Peqiang speaks from the heart and tells the government to think of the children, so the UAG decides to give him a chance. They still can't send out such orders, but they will allow someone to speak to the rescue units directly so each person can decide if they want to join this kamikaze mission or spend the last few days with their families. Han Duoduo is the chosen one to talk to the rescuers. She sends out a message talking about being scared but wanting to help anyway, she also mentions hope. This is enough to convince most rescue units to turn around their trucks and rush to help them. Once her speech is done, she joins Wang Lei's team to help them push while Lu Peqiang starts redirecting other engines towards Jupiter as well. After a lot of effort, Lu Qi manages to kick the core into place but ends up getting stuck inside the chamber, Tim rescues him by grabbing his rope and jumping off the bridge to create a counterweight. Lu Qi is dragged onto the bridge safely, and he pulls Tim up with him before getting in the truck to leave the room before it explodes. Meanwhile, Lao He manages to connect the CPU with a new configuration right before dying from the wounds left by the debris that had fallen on him. Li Yi's software reaches 100% and shuts down the engine, the only thing left to do is the manual unlocking. Wang Lei's team is still having trouble with the pin, but luckily, the reinforcement teams arrive then and help them push the pin into place. The engines are started, but the explosive range is too short to be able to ignite the hydrogen. Liu Peqiang sees this on the station monitor and decides he wants to help using the 300,000 tons of fuel the spaceship is carrying. He asks the UAG for permission to plunge into the plasma beam but he's denied since the point of the station is to ensure humanity's survival with Helios. The UAG hangs up on him and Moss tells him it will stop him from trying anything, so Lu Peqiang takes an extreme measure, he grabs the bottle of vodka Makarov had gifted him and throws it at Moss, lighting it on fire and effectively disabling it. Lu Peqiang finally regains manual control of the station and begins to steer it towards the plasma beam while listening to a message from the UAG saying they have decided to opt for hope and to respect his decision. During his last moments, Lu Peqiang contacts Earth and tells the team not to turn off the engines, no matter how much Lu Qi protests against his plan. He apologizes to his son and like that day 17 years ago, he tells him to look at the sky where he'll see his father as a star. 
the station collides with the plasma beam then and this time, the resulting explosion is enough to blow up Jupiter and push Earth away. The team and the rescue unit start running to hide in the underground city, but Lu Chi doesn't want to leave without Han Duoduo, who has fallen unconscious under some debris. Li Yi tells them to hide under the engine, which should counteract the force of the shockwave. Wang Lei dies when the whole building collapses, and the siblings fall into an abyss, surviving only thanks to one of Lu Chi's special spheres. But when a piece of machinery hits the sphere, the siblings are expulsed out of it and Lu Chi's helmet gets cracked. Han Duoduo cries to Tim for help as Earth's engines start working again and finally allow the planet to leave Jupiter's atmosphere. Three years later, humanity has started a new project to take Earth out of the solar system before the expanding sun consumes it all. Lu Chi, Han Duoduo, and Li Yi Yi work as transport vehicle drivers while the wandering Earth makes its way towards the Alpha Centauri star system. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.